Something about Hello Kitty always rubbed me the wrong way. Her blank stare always seemed to hide a vile secret. When I found out about the case dubbed the Hello Kitty murder, I suddenly realized what that secret was. And with your permission, I'm going to share it with you. And probably ruin your childhood in the process. Just before the turn of the century, crime-riddled Hong Kong was brought into the international spotlight for a case that still manages to make our skins crawl, even today. On the 17th of March, 1999, a 23-year-old nightclub hostess named Fan Man Yi was kidnapped by three men and imprisoned for a month in an apartment at number 31 Granville Road, Sim Setsui. Her captors were 34-year-old Chan Man Oi, 27-year-old Lung Xin Chou, and 21-year-old Lung Wai Yun. They were all part of the Hong Kong triad and regular customers of the nightclub where Fan Man Yi worked. Chan Man met Fan Man in early 1997 and they quickly hit it off because they had some things in common. Namely, Fan Man was working as a prostitute to finance her drug addiction and Chan Man was a pimp and drug dealer. Before we all launch into any kind of victim blaming, it's important to note that Fan Man's life was tragic long before she met the people who would later cause her demise. After being abandoned by her family as a child, she was raised in a girl's home. No one really knows what kind of living condition she had during this time, but it's safe to assume she was faced with several traumatic experiences by the time she was a teen. Consequently, she developed a drug addiction and turned to prostitution to secure the money to fuel this addiction. By the time she was 23, she had secured a job as a hostess at a nightclub, which was most likely a front for prostitution. Some sources mentioned she was married at the time of the crime, although her husband was abusive and did not even try to find her during the month in which she was imprisoned. So what would make a 34-year-old socialite and his two friends want to kidnap that man, considering they were friends? One night, presumably pressed by her addiction, Fan Man stole a wallet with 4,000 Hong Kong dollars from Chen Man. You don't really have to be a genius to understand that stealing money from a pimp and drug dealer is probably a bad idea. Of course, he found out and asked for his money back alongside an interest of 10,000 Hong Kong dollars. Out of fear, she returned the money she stole immediately and asked for some more time to gather the rest. Chan Man thought she would try and escape if he granted her any time, and so he and his henchmen took Fan Man to a rundown flat pertaining to the Mafia group, where they subjected her to severe, heinous acts of torture. The plan was for Fan Man to work as a prostitute in that very apartment until her debt was paid. Before long, the plan had gotten a bit out of hand since Chan Man and his henchmen took a bit too many liberties with Fan Man's body. At first, she was beaten with metal bars, kitchen utensils, and furniture pieces. She sustained several forms of sexual abuse from the torturous trio and the several clients she was brought in order to pay back her debt. As the perpetrator's thirst for violence was stimulated, the acts of torture became more and more disturbing. With every beating, Fan Man's body became weaker and weaker. Her body started showing traces of these acts, which made her less and less appealing to clients, and thus, she was unable to get any more money for the trio. This rubbed Chan Man the wrong way and made him dial up the torture, although by that time her debt was allegedly paid 100%. Her wounds were rubbed with spices, food, urine, and dirt. They would regularly burn her with candle wax and melt plastic on her skin, specifically on her legs and feet so she couldn't walk. When they ran out of things to burn, they burned her directly. When they weren't subjecting her to gruesome torture, the three men used to play video games in the room next door to Fan Man. The mother of a one-year-old son was forced to consume human feces and urine. Moreover, they would make her smile and say she enjoyed the beatings. If she refused, she was subjected to even harsher torture. At one point, she was too weak to respond to the beatings anymore. They tied her wrists up with electrical cords and left her suspended in the air so she would be easy to beat. They would leave her there for hours, sometimes even overnight. 
After a month of imprisonment, Fan Man passed away while her captors were out. When they returned, they found her in the bathroom where they had locked her in. The official report said she succumbed to her wounds, although Chan Man and his henchmen argued she died of an overdose of methamphetamine she administered herself. Her body was then dismembered using a saw in the apartment's bathtub. After decapitating her and cutting her body into multiple pieces, which were later cooked on a stove so they would not rot and start smelling. Sometimes they would reportedly cook her remains next to pots they were cooking their own food in. On at least one occasion, the jury was told they used the same cooking utensils to stir their noodles along with the pot where her remains were boiling. Upon completion, the cooked remains were discarded along with their household garbage, although some parts of her corpse remained in the apartment. Her boiled skull was sewn into an oversized Hello Kitty mermaid doll. They also kept one of her teeth and several internal organs in a plastic bag hidden on top of a canopy bed. This heinous crime had a great chance of remaining hidden for eternity if it wasn't for a 14-year-old girl only known as Ah Fong, a pseudonym she received from the Hong Kong courts. The girl was Chan Man's grooming victim, which he kept around as one of his girlfriends. During Fan Man's month of imprisonment, Ah Fong visited the apartment where she was kept and witnessed the three men kicking her 50 times in the head. Ah Fong then joined them and hit the victim in the head. As part of her plea deal, the extent to which Afong participated in the torture was not released, although it might have been significant. In court, Afong was asked why did she participate in the torture, to which she replied, I had a feeling it was for fun. In May, Afong went to the police station where she told officers that she'd been haunted by the ghost of a woman. She said that the spirit was bound by electrical wire and tortured to death, but the police dismissed her claims as nothing but nightmares. Riddled with guilt, Afong then told them that the ghost was that of a woman she had a hand in murdering. This quickly had the police pay more attention to her claims. They then followed the girl into the abandoned apartment in the city's Kowloon district. Here, they found the Hello Kitty doll with the decapitated head stuffed inside, which triggered a frantic investigation. The murder scene was full of Hello Kitty memorabilia, including sheets, curtains, towels, and silverware. They quickly found Fan Man's remains inside, along with evidence that all three men had interacted with them. After a six-week trial, all three men were charged with manslaughter and unlawful imprisonment. The jury accepted that the men did not kill Fan Man with intent, which would have granted them mandatory life sentences. Instead, they concluded she died as a result of their abuse, which meant that they would receive a review for parole after a sentence of 20 years. Several medical professionals tested them, but they were diagnosed with no mental illnesses, although the medical reports described all of them as remorseless. Although Ah Fung was a part of the crime, she was left free due to the fact that she was underage and she offered so much vital information regarding the case. Based on the accounts of Ah Fung mentioning Fan Man's ghost, people believed her spirit was trying to communicate. The apartment building where she died it became a meeting place for people who were trying to contact the ghost. The Hello Kitty memorabilia added another layer of interest for the public, as the cartoon character was well adored in Hong Kong. The movement became bigger with time, and it quickly turned toxic as people were starting to do questionable things in the area. In 2012, the building was demolished, and in 2016, a hotel was built on that plot of land. A hotel I would rather not stay in if I do say so myself. The story climbed to the top of humanity's list of heinous crimes and had several movies produced about it, including 2001's There's a Secret in My Soup and Bones Season 4 episode titled The Girl in the Mask. Yes, The Secret in My Soup is a terrible name for such a movie. In addition, several sociologists and psychologists analyze the story in great detail. Professor Karen Jo Laidler from the University of Hong Kong confirmed that the crime fits the framework of the period. Since the 1999's Hong Kong was a place where drug-riddled acts of violence were prevalent, especially against women. However, she argues that the crime was a true anomaly. To quote her, I get that it's connected to this era of violent events in Hong Kong, 
but I see it as an isolated event that was in the context of heavy methamphetamine use and all the consequences that come with the chronic use of methamphetamine. She said that the way Chan and his henchmen approached this crime was typical of meth users, taking it in a small private group. In addition, she mentioned that meth users could become quite aggressive due to being awake for long periods and not eating, along with the irritability and paranoia that the drug induces. The bottom line? Don't do drugs, kids. The sentence passed in December 2000, which means that as of December 2020, the sadistic trio is up for parole. Sweet dreams, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to come along with me on this gruesome journey. It's fine if you just want to curl up into a ball and cry for a while, but if your true crime bone is still itching, how about you check out some of my other videos? You'll feel a lot better about yourself, no matter how evil you think you are. If you like the story, why don't you join our cult of weirdos and white girls? No true crime aficionado will ever get bored with a subscription to this channel, so get yours while it's hot. There's plenty of crime to go around.